chapter four, population stabilization. Greetings, my beloved sister. The population control, which should rather be called population stabilization, number of two children per family is just an average. It does not mean that each and every family was compelled to have exactly two children. That would be a hard thing to do and very inefficient. Remember that efficiency is one of the 144,000 attributes of God. What it means is that when you consider the entire population and count all the children, they average two children per family. There are families that will have as few as one child or no children at all. While some families will have as many as 12, I have not seen a situation where a family had more than 12 children, but it is possible that it could have happened because obviously I'm not aware of all the situations in the entire period of our history of 78 trillion years. Now, even if it did happen, it would not change the average because of the following reasons. Their custom is that when married, couples start to have children. The chiefs and judges are involved in the family planning of each and every couple because they are responsible for population stabilization. They're the ones who will give certain families permission to have more than two children after they have consulted with other couples in the town to find out which among them plan to have no children at all in their present incarnation and how many plan to have only one child. Such plans are always finalized in advance by each family according to the details of their destiny. In other words, what is their mission on earth in that particular incarnation and what will be their contribution to their town, their clan, their tribe, and the nation as a whole? As soon as the judges have a complete idea of each family's plan as to how many are to have one child or no children at all, then they inform the chiefs who are then afforded the leeway to give permission to those parents who want a large family, up to as many as 12 children, as I said before. When the judges take a population census, as they do periodically, they will know how far below the total their town is. And so some other town will then have the opportunity to make up for the deficit by allowing those parents who have expressed a desire to have three, four, five or more children to go ahead and do so. So the total number of children in a given census period may be below average in some towns and above average in others, but the total will always be adjusted so that the average number of children per family is reached, thereby ensuring that the planet in every millennium has its maximum of 1 billion, 8 million people. Considering that we are talking about very long lived people, the next obvious question now is when do they actually have children and how often? Do they have children like modern people do? Meaning that all times there are children born somewhere on earth or do they use a different and more natural method appropriate for long lived beings? The answer is that they do not have children at all times like modern people do. Our modern method is very unnatural being forced on us by the fact that we live a very short life. Their custom of childbearing was as follows. It was determined a long time ago at the very beginning by the original people on the first earth that the best way for children to be raised and educated properly is when as many children as possible are around at the same time. So they have a law which states that parents may bear children only during the period that is set aside as the childbearing period. This is a period that is about a hundred years long give or take several years, and it occurs only once every thousand years. Once that period is over, parents are not allowed to have any more children until the next hundred year period comes around 1000 years later. The law states very explicitly that any child that will be born after the childbearing period is over, such a child will be taken by the judges and sent back to the ancestral world. Let me state here, that I have been told that in all history of our nation, such a thing has never happened. Every person on earth knows the law and it has never been contravened ever once, even once in all our 78 trillion years of history. Anyone who thinks that this is impossible 
does not have a good understanding of our ancient ways. Our laws were not laws as laws are known today, but were actually customs based on nature and meant to enhance the lives of the ancients. Any person who would go against the laws will be going against their own desires and self-interest. The people actually love their laws and customs because they saw clearly how their lives were enhanced by such laws resulting in greater happiness, peace, and spiritual advancement. Normally, most if not all of the childless couples who wish to have children will have all their children during the first 100 year period of childbearing. It does happen that some parents will have their first children during the first 100 year period, then have more during the second 100 year period a thousand years later. But this is very rare. The common way is to have all their children during the first 100 year period of childbearing so that all the siblings in the family will be separated by just a few years, as is the case even today. Taking into account the full 100 year period, it stands to reason that the oldest children of that generation will be only about 100 years older than the youngest, no more than 100 years. This turns out to be a very good and practical way to ensure that the whole generation which amounts to about 144 million youths, will be able to attend the education rituals at about the same time, and more importantly, be able to attend the first great ritual of the Black nation together, all 144 million of them at the same time. With this customary practice, as you can imagine, most of the time on earth, there will be no children to be found anywhere. And by children, I mean those cute little ones 10 years old and under that are always running around and playing tirelessly and providing a lot of pleasure to adults. Such children are around for only about 100 years and then that's it. They are nowhere to be seen after that for the next 100, 900 years until the next childbearing period comes around 1000 years later. Remember that even though the people lived to be 7,000 years old or more, their childhood period exactly like ours today. It ends when they are about 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14 years old. Therefore, every thousand years, the entire nation, especially women, look forward to this 100-year childbearing period. It is a time of joy and great happiness like no other. The entire planet practically comes to a stop during the childbearing period. The following 900 years or so, after all the children of that generation have been born and have grown up, there are no little ones to be found anywhere on the entire planet. Every person, starting with the childless couples who will be parents soon, on to their parents who will be grandparents, and then the great grandparents, and then the great great grandparents, and then the great 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 grandparents and then the great 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 grandparents and lastly but not least the 7000 year old great 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 grandparents or senior citizens who are about to ascend but will not do so until they have enjoyed that 100 years with their great 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 grandchildren every one of them is in a state of unbound joy brought about by the presence of children it is quite an amazing spectacle to behold this child rearing period. To be honest with you, I was very sad in the first time I became aware of it, seeing all the children grow up with no little ones running around anywhere on the entire planet really saddened me to think that the people will not see children for a whole 900 years. But it was explained to me that my sadness was brought about by the fact that our lives today are so short this fact was interfering with my thought process, causing me to think that I personally would never see children there again because of my short lifespan. The ancients themselves are not bothered by this at all. I came to realize that on the contrary, this absence of children for 900 years is part of the reason why their joy is so unbounded when children are present. Perhaps if they were always in the presence of children like we are today, their joy would be tempered somewhat. The 7,000 year old citizens spend a lot of time with the children during these last years of their lives on earth. 
they will see them pass through puberty and go through all their ritual education until they reach the age of 77 years old and become full citizens of the earth when they complete the perfection of their character and get ready to contribute their unique talents to society. Only after that do the senior citizens decide that it is time now to ascend. When they do, it is a long-standing tradition that those very same children who are now full adults will have the front row seat in the arena at the ascension ceremony of their patriarch and matriarch, their oldest living relatives, the oldest boy and girl, really man and woman, among all the great, 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 great grandchildren will be the ones who hold the hands of the patriarch and matriarch as they get ready to ascend. 